Well, there's a number of reasons people like to belong to the American Gym Trade Association. There's educational opportunities, there's opportunities in the marketplace at our shows, whether in Tucson, Las Vegas, New York. Uh, but many of them, the primary reason that they belong is because they agree with and support the strong ethics of this association. When we were founded in 1981, we wrote a code of ethics, one of the earliest code of ethics in our industry. And amongst other issues, that code of ethics um, defines the business practices that you use as a member of our association. One of the primary pillars of that code of ethics that comes into play every day, every time there's a transaction, is the full and complete disclosure of treatment information. Since its inception in 1981, HTA members annually sign a code of ethics statement where they're recommitting to the, the code of ethics of the association. When you get to colored gemstones, you've entered a universe that is vast. There's hundreds of different minerals that qualify as gemstones and, and organic materials that qualify. Because it's such a big universe, there's obviously um, oftentimes uncertainty about the product itself. When a buyer is interested in purchasing a gemstone, the first motivation is probably emotional. But in purchasing colored gemstones, there's also a lower degree or lower level of education. And also with gemstones, there's a great deal of enhancement or treatment that takes place in these gemstones. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. People are fine with that. They don't mind the enhancement process, but what they do want when they make a purchase, they want to be informed of it. Because if they're not informed, um, it appears to have been something that was withheld. And one of the reasons people feel comfortable working with American Gem Trade Association dealers is because they are required to and they commit to giving full disclosure information. That information is traded throughout the supply chain, so there's a greater level of confidence. If there's a concern on the part of a customer who's purchased from an AGTA member, they can call our office and we have dispute resolution. We can investigate it for them and find out. We have developed um, a number of ways to share that information because the information needs to be shared throughout the supply chain. So when a person is mining gemstones in Kenya and he comes to the United States to sell the rough and the rough is cut and polished and treated, all the way along the chain to the gemstone dealer, to the manufacturer, to the designer, to the retailer, to the consumer, they need to be able to understand what treatment processes have taken place. Um, gemstone enhancement is a very common process. Most gemstones are routinely treated to improve their appearance. Now in order for us to ensure that the, any purchaser along the chain is getting the appropriate information, in 1987 we worked with about nine or ten industry organizations, uh, associations representing other groups in our industry, and said we'd like to develop <coughs> comprehensive treatment information and we'd like to use letter codes to define what that information means. The important thing for a uh, supplier or wholesaler to understand is that those codes are acceptably used throughout the industry. from a supplier to a manufacturer to a retailer, we can use that language on our commercial documents. Once it goes to the retailer, the retailer understands that the stone has been heated because he sees that H and he can communicate that either in writing or in direct communication with the consumer. The Gemstone Information Manual details all of the different codes and what they mean and it also has a comprehensive chart in the brochure that illustrates what gemstones, how they're treated, and how regularly they're treated. The requirements of disclosing treatment are established by the Federal Trade Commission. In the American Gem Trade Association, our requirements are even stricter. 
Federal Trade Commission says that if it is non-permanent or if it impacts the value of the stone or requires special care, it needs to be disclosed. Our code of ethics requires all treatments to be disclosed. So let me give you an example here of the appropriate way or the, the way we like to see these enhancement codes and information included in an invoice. This is a sample invoice from a company where you see the name of the company, there's a series of codes here with their explanation and reference information say where you can go to find out what those codes mean. The codes themselves, unless you have a description on the invoice mean necessarily nothing. I mean, if you are uh, been in this industry for a while and you understand those codes, you know that H means heat or B means bleaching, but it's important to have that referent information as well. So the requirement on the wholesale side is to include that information on your invoices clearly. It cannot be general. It has to be specific for each particular item. In some cases, you'll see, and where there's a general statement at the bottom, say, most gemstones are routinely heated and ours are treated according to traditional methods. Well, that's absolutely true, but it's not the specific information that is required by AGTA Code of Ethics. It is very important that those codes be included because it gives the retail jeweler the information they need to share with their customer. Once a retail jeweler gets those commercial documents and sees what treatment has taken place, they need to have a method to communicate that to their customer. So what we've done is we've provided a number of point of sale materials that talks about the different gemstones, gives general information about the gemstone, but each of them includes specific enhancement information that is appropriate for that particular stone. We have a brochure, that's a general brochure that talks about gemstone enhancements, what you should know. This is written in very consumer friendly language. It talks about the 15 or 20 major colored gemstones that you're going to routinely see in a jewelry store. And it's something that you can provide to the customer that during the sales process, it's attractive, it's informational, they like this type of thing, and it makes certain that you fulfilled your requirements for disclosure with the consumer. A retail jeweler today, aside from disclosure, has to be able to advise the customer appropriately, and certainly with colored gemstones because they're so popular, they need to get to a particular point where this material not only educates their customer, but it's sufficient for estimating their, or educating their staff because they, they have to get the staff people up to speed as well. One product I'd like to point out is the Retail Reference Guide. This is a guide that covers general reference information for the products that the retail jeweler uses. It has precious metals, it has diamonds, it also has colored gemstones and cultured pearls. And in the colored gemstone section of this reference guide, you will see all of the different gemstones discussed and about where they come from, how they're produced, what the history and lore is, but they also, each of them has a section that talks about enhancement. Now this is the kind of guide that can be used very comfortably at the counter. We want the materials that we're providing for the retail jeweler to be the type of material that they could put in their customer's hands and the customer could go home with. So that it's clear, it's non-technical, um, and it helps them make an informed decision. It also, we find that providing this type of information puts you a few notches up in the minds of the consumer because they like to have that information. They like to have it addressed with them. And if they feel that you're, they're getting the appropriate information, that's where they typically make a decision to buy. The key to disclosure is, is education, understanding what's taking place. You have to be committed to disclose. You have to use the appropriate codes and the appropriate commercial documents to make sure that your customer, whether your customer is a designer, a manufacturer, or a retail jeweler, has the basic information. Okay, it's easily provided, and if you've got questions, you can go to the website.
We make sure that in each of our seminar presentations at our shows, we have discussions about the disclosure methods, new treatments that are coming out. We have two websites. One of our websites is agta.org, and that's more or less the trade side. And we also have addmorecoloredtoyourlife.com. General information about colored gemstones, fashion, style, design is going to be found at Add More Color to Your Life. We also have an online course that covers everything colored gemstones and cultured pearls from soup to nuts. Many of those courses, which are broken up into about 10 minute segments, um, address disclosure. If they're addressing a particular gemstone, then it also talks about any particular information that's important about disclosure with that specific gemstone. The thing I'd like to point out is if you're a member of the American Gem Trade Association, all of these materials are provided for you free. But if you're not a member and you'd like to purchase them, they can be found on our product site or services on the AGTA.org website.